A lot of cycling performance is related to your functional threshold power, or FTP. Being successful at time trials or up long climbs both requires a high FTP, but it also has a big bearing on other aspects of cycling, such as helping you on group rides, for example. But how do you go about raising it? Well, here are a few tips that we have found very effective. intervals were where I made some of my biggest improvements in the years just after I got a power meter. It refers to a level just a little bit below threshold, so it's hard, but it's not so hard that you can't do a number of sessions per week and still allow your body to recover, adapt, and then go again. You can vary these sessions by doing intervals of different lengths, generally over 15 minutes, and you can also vary the types of terrain that you use to do them. These sweet spot efforts are often described as the best thing for your buck and they offer the best physiological response for the time you put in the saddle. What can be better when it comes to improving your FTP than threshold intervals themselves? Getting your body to work at exactly that intensity will hopefully see it adapt and improve. Of course, you can't do efforts at this level every day of the week, but doing two 20 minute intervals or two 30 minute intervals a couple times a week will do you a world of good. We've said it before, but we'll say it again. Consistency is absolutely key to making improvements when cycling. So that means regular, shorter workouts are more effective than one massive ride per week. Well, actually, having said that, one big ride when you come up a place like this, it's pretty bloody good anyway, isn't it? Yeah, we know they're expensive and they're not for everyone, but it has to be said that a power meter is arguably the best training aid you can get, especially if you're looking to improve your FTP. It allows you to quantifiably measure your effort and your current form every time you're out on the bike, so you get the most out of your training. It's rare to see a pro cyclist without one these days, but they're actually probably even more useful for the rest of us who've got limited time to train but still want to get the absolute most out of the time we do have. Raising your FTP is a slow process, whatever your cycling level. It's easy to look back after two weeks of training and wonder why your power has barely moved. However, you should look at the bigger picture. A 20 to 30 watt gain in three to four months is pretty significant, but it takes time and effort. Being able to do long intervals requires the correct type of roads. Long climbs are great as it's much easier to keep the power down when you're fighting against gravity. But alternatively, if you don't live in a hilly area, you can find some quiet roads with few junctions and little traffic so that you aren't continually having to stop or slow down during your efforts. Sometimes called a torture device, an indoor trainer is actually an incredibly useful tool for improvement. It takes away all the outside variables such as traffic, junctions, descents, etc. and allows you to completely focus 100% on getting your intervals done at the correct intensity. Take some time to set your bike up with a fan and some sort of entertainment, GCN training videos for example, and you'll find that time passes that bit quicker. Cutting down on your weekly training hours can mean you actually get a lot more out of your high intensity sessions. Endurance riding can leave quite a bit of residual fatigue in your muscles, meaning that you might not even be able to hit the higher intensities needed to improve your functional threshold power. So try cutting down on your longer hours and focus more on nailing your harder sessions. It's only when your body is resting that it absorbs the training that you've done and makes improvements in efficiency. If you don't allow your body to rest, you'll become fatigued and worst case scenario, enter into a state of overtraining, which sees your performance worsen considerably. Yeah, so make sure you plan in adequate rest, maybe a couple of days off the bike each week, and also pay attention to the signs of overtraining. So it might be elevated resting heart rate, inability to get your heart rate up when you're doing high intensity efforts, or even things like poor sleep, and particularly being irritable or grumpy. Is that why Dan's always grumpy? No, that, that is just Dan, I'm afraid. Okay, so this is the most expensive option for most of us, but it's become a de rigueur amongst the pros. You spend two to four weeks at altitude and it teases your body into producing more of your red blood cells that you need to transport oxygen that we use to fuel our muscles. Your power won't be as high whilst you're there, but you should find that on your return to sea level, it is significantly improved. 
So there are a few really effective tips that you can put into practice to help improve your functional threshold power, both training and also practical advice. However, if you need to find the test for your FTP, well, we've got a video showing you how to do exactly that. Just click up there. Or for more training advice, click on this playlist. And to subscribe to GCN, click on the clouds. Wow, I definitely click on those. Hi, too. Yeah. Oh, wait, let me do the other hand. Low five. Oh, yeah, that's cooler. <laughs>